everybody, I'm joining you today to talk about LS engines. A lot of folks have interest in putting an LS engine in as a conversion for, for older cars. You know, especially the 80s, 90s, uh, you know, an LS, Chevy, GM, powertrain, small block is a very, very popular uh, conversion. I had a lot of folks with my 85 Camaro IROC uh, encouraging me uh, to make an LS swap as well and then if you go back and look at some of my past videos I've got some ex explanation why I didn't do that and my choice was that I wanted to mo do more restoration on my Camaro and keep it um, keep it more original nature of the car but anyway um, so today I'm not going to tell you that I'm putting an LS in the Camaro sorry but I'm working uh, on another LS project and a project car uh, helping someone else. It happens to be my son. And he's putting an LS uh, into uh, a, a Cadillac uh, D car, Brougham, large rear wheel drive caddy. Uh, he's already got a couple of years into this project. I mean, let's be, let's be straight, right? Um, people who aren't, you know, I'm retired, I can spend a lot of time on things. Uh, when you're younger and you're raising a family and you got a budget and all that. So he's been working this one along uh, for probably a couple of years now. And we're getting to the point where, uh, uh, where, where things are really getting underway. Uh, he has a used engine, 5.3 out of a, an Avalanche, uh, vintage about 2001 I think it was. And he's been doing the preparation on that. He's been getting the car ready. Uh, a lot of things that you have to do. So, one of the things that most people don't understand when you say, I want to go do an LS type swap, is what you really need to do to make it happen. And as we've been making the preparations, you know, the, uh, there are a lot of things, you know, mounting systems, wiring, how you hook up ECMs, uh, fuel systems, fuel tanks for a fuel-injected engine if you didn't have one already. Uh, you know, what does it take to put one of these all together? And so, I'm going to show you kind of where the project stands at the moment. And over the coming weeks and months, um, I'm going to walk through... Uh, you know, a lot of groundwork has been done, a lot of study has been done on how to do this right. And I know, as I talk to my son, he says, well, you know, I've been looking at this and looking at that, and we've been talking on forums, and people go, ah, just go put it in this way and it'll be fine. You know, on a number of fronts. Um, you know, you talk about, well, how do I dump the gas tank? How do I do this? How do I do that? And... Um, those of you who've been watching me before on the Camaro, you know, my goal as a retired automotive engineer with a lot of years of experience in the business is, I want to do things right. So it's not just, will it go together and can I fake it? It's, is it the right way to do it? Is it the way, um, if, I, if I was a GM factory engineer wanting to put this in the car, how would they have done it? That's kind of my reference point, okay? So, as I said, I'm going to start feeding you video and uh, explanations of how we go through this project. And, you know, this may be, you know, installing an LS engine into a Cadillac, but most of the things we're going through, you could, you could be installing an LS into a Camaro, into a Monte Carlo, into a Caprice, um, you, you know, you name it. Uh, the challenges that we're up against will be um, very similar, uh, I'll say, you know, going into a General Motors chassis. If you decide you want to put one in a Ford, there may be some other things that will be a little trickier. Um, the basic science will be the same. The question will be, um, you know, other adaptations may be a little bit more, uh, more challenging. But, so, that's where I am for right now. More to come. Here goes. Hey, working on a new project. Actually, been working on this for, with my son for a while. Uh, he has this nice 1987 Cadillac Brougham, 
and he wants to replace the 307 with an LS 5.3 engine that he has and he's been working on. So we're digging in, getting ready to do the engine change. We're at the point where we're pulling out the front radiator support so we have better access to the engine. We'll need to pull the engine and work on mounts. He's been working, this has been about a two year process where he's had the engine, he's got been uh, getting it uh, cleaned up and prepped and ready to go in and, and doing all the research. And uh, for, a, for a fuel injected engine, you need a new fuel tank, a new fuel system. There's a lot of prep work on it. We'll go through all that as time goes on here. So here goes. Now it's poured out. We're ready to pull the engine. We've got everything disconnected, labeled, so we know where things go. We're just about ready to start pulling her out. All right, so we have the old engine on the hook, and we're just starting to get the weight off the mounts and try to get it uh, lifted out of the car. We got it up off the clamshells. We've got the rear mount released by cutting the bolt off because we couldn't get the bolts out of the transmission. It'd be a little bit more fun, but once we get it out of there, we we can do that. Tube is still clear. Yep. These tubes are still clear. Um, you, I guess you can hang on there. I'm going to put the breaker bar in. And we're, we're not quite leveled up, so I'm going to roll it a little like that. Okay. And say, can you pull it back a little? Say lift a little bit the trans toward the transmission here with the balance point. Okay, now, now lift a little more. Okay, now I think you're getting close. Looks like the exhaust is very close over here. Yeah, it's close, but it's not not touching. Not quite. Okay, let me roll it a little more. take a look underneath and see where the trans The rear mount is now off the transmission, so we had to cut the bolt so we could get it clear of the cross member so we could get a six-point socket on it to get it loose. Man, access to those bolts is really tough. So now the back of the transmission is clear, and it's going to drop, drop down, so I'm, again I'm going to go a little bit further. With I was backing it up so we could help get the weight off the transmission mount and back. Yeah. Now we need to go the opposite direction. Now we need to roll it forward. Gotcha. We'll just do this. Exhaust clear. Go up some? Yeah, go up some. We're still hanging free. The transmission's not hitting, so. And it just sticks clear. Okay, hold up a second. 
Okay. Um, but you're getting very close. You just got to get the exhaust pipe another half inch or so. You good on that side? Yep. Not through. Not through. Okay. Go, go one, one more. more. One or two more. Okay. So now that the engine is out and the engine compartment is opened up, uh, Dan's going to go dig in and start cleaning up and prepping, uh, put in some new um, brake lines and clean up the chassis. And then we'll be back uh, with the new engine and the 4L60E transmission uh, to do some test fitting on the mounts in the next uh, episode. So stay tuned. Uh, We'll be back with more.